Campbell from York University Political Science. Uh, over uh, the last uh, number of months, we've been holding a number of discussions on the, uh, on the crisis on austerity, uh, going back to the Socialist Register launch on and its volumes on the crisis. Uh, some of the another discussion on Quebec and the workers uh, and the student strike there, uh, and also more recently on the French election. Uh, as well as a discussion by uh, Stefan Lendorf on the various union movement struggles in, 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 in uh, uh, Europe against austerity. Uh, the uh, election and the events in Greece over the last two years, what has been street fighting and strikes and, and, and so on for two years now, uh, culminated uh, to some extent in this week's, uh, uh, the Sunday's election with the rise in, of the vote of Syriza from uh, being a relatively minor party to a very major political force in uh, Greece. Uh, uh, and the key force in, in, in Greece in, for anti-austerity. Uh, the election uh, re results did not uh, lead them to, uh, to take the, 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 the major or the most votes. But clearly, they are now a significant political force, and it is uncertain at this point in time how the fight back off austerity will unfold. Uh, we're lucky uh, to have uh, uh, Leo Panich from York University, an editor of the Socialist Register, to be able to speak about these events. He was just uh, recently in Greece, uh, meeting with, uh, with uh, different officials and, uh, and uh, uh, grassroots activists with uh, Syriza with, as well as speaking at a range of other events with the Greek left. So I'm just going to turn it over to Leo and he can uh, pick it up and lead us through some of the discussion on, on, on the Greek uh, election and the situation of the anti-austerity fight facts in Greece. Uh, formally, the, the discussion, the, tonight's discussion is called titled The Challenges of the, of the Greek Left After the Election, an Assessment to Report Back. Leo. Thanks a lot, Greg. Uh, I really appreciate so many of you coming out tonight, uh, and I really want to thank Greg for organizing this, as he so often takes the initiative in doing for the Center for Social Justice, for the Workers' Assembly, for the Socialist Project. I, I was invited uh, to come to a political and cultural festival uh, organized by Andersia, which is the coalition of revolutionary left parties uh, in Greece. Uh, I had been interviewed by four of their young militants at a conference that Sam and I attended in Philadelphia in October uh, for their newspaper. Uh, and uh, we discussed primarily the question of staying in the Euro going out of the Euro, etc. Uh, and uh, uh, I was very pleased to be invited because uh, obviously uh, what was going on in Greece uh, was of enormous interest and importance to uh, the whole of the Western left, and one might even say the whole of the world left. Uh, and I have had a personal attachment to Greece for a very long time, um, having first gone there half a life ago uh, over 30 years ago, uh, having fallen in love with the culture and the politicized atmosphere. It's the most politicized Western country that I know by far. And then just about the time that Greg showed up at Carleton University in the uh, early 80s uh, to, to study with me, so did another uh, guy who had studied at the University of Manitoba, Michael Spurdalakis, uh, a Greek uh, who did a PhD with me on PASOC, on the contradictions, limitations, clientelism, uh, abject parliamentary cretinism, uh, et cetera, of, of PASOC as a party. Uh, he went back to Greece, did his military service, um, and became uh, not only one of the leading, maybe the leading political scientists uh, in Greece, but one of the founding members of the central political organization of Syriza, which is a party called Sinas Pismos. Uh, uh, partly because of that, partly because of my other work, I've often been invited back to Greece. Uh, and, uh, you know, for instance, uh, in 1999, there was a big conference in honor of uh, Nikos Boulantzas, 20 years after his 
uh, suicide. And uh, it was a remarkable uh, conference. Uh, and only in a, a society like this could this happen. Uh, the Prime Minister at the time, uh, the head of the SOC, whose name was Samitis, you may remember his name, by no means much of a lefty, uh, introduced, uh, spoke first at that conference, and pointed out that he and Boulantzas had been students together at the Lycee uh, in Athens, uh, that he had been the Marxist as a young boy then, 12, 13, and Poulantzas had been rather a liberal uh, at the time. Now, I don't know how many prime ministers you come across that would admit to having been a Marxist back then, even if he was by no means a Marxist at that point. Uh, and I had, in a sense, had a taste of this because my barber, who's across the street here on Bloor, that's the barber, uh, who himself is uh, a old Greek lefty and, and, and comes out of the left in the Greek Civil War although he doesn't make too much of this if you go into the barber shop because he doesn't want to cut off many of his customers. Um, uh, I had asked him what he thought of Samitis, and he said, yeah, he's a pretty good guy. So in an interview I did with the newspaper at the time, I said that uh, Gus the Barber had told me Samitis was a pretty good guy, and they published this very prominently uh, in the newspaper, much, I think, to Gus's horror, uh, worried that, that uh, he was going to lose some customers uh, from the right side of the Greek community here. Uh, it was pointed out to me by uh, a, a professor this time uh, in, in a meeting I had uh, that uh, a quote from, a headline from that interview uh, was stuck up on his office wall he had been a graduate student at the time, and now he's a professor, and is still stuck up at his office wall. And it was something to the effect that modernizers are cruel and cynical. Uh, and it was a referred reference to Tony Blair in the third way, and you know, those modernizers who were all over the sock, and to some extent also all over Sinas Pismos, this central party in uh, Syriza at that time. Uh, I happened to be back. Uh, uh, in, uh, in 2008, just as the student insurrection was taking place. Uh, Syriza had uh, uh, gotten into Parliament uh, in the interim period, having passed the uh, barrier for uh, getting elected in that proportional representation system. And by virtue of that, since they have something like the German system, a party that gets elected uh, gets research funds. Part of the things they're expected to do is to set up a research institute. Uh, it primarily for a party like Syria is, uh, is a means of channeling money back to the party for its organizing and mobilization <laughs> activities. Uh, but it also uh, serves a purpose for uh, intellectual life. And uh, the second annual Pulantzas lecture they sponsored, I happened to be organized and I was invited to speak at it at the time of the student insurrection. And what was so important and interesting and clear at that time uh, was that Syriza, who had gone up in the polls in that year before the student insurrection to 15 to 18 percent of the vote, uh, threw itself completely behind the student insurrection. Uh, the Communist Party uh, accused the student insurrection of being uh, fomented by political spies and foreign agents. Uh, and every other party, obviously part of the revolutionary left in Syriza, uh, were taking uh, a, a very jaundiced view of it. Uh, Syriza completely threw themselves behind it. And that indicated to me that this was a party that was very much committed to struggles from below. It was very interesting. And they were being led at that time by a major figure, uh, Elevanos, from the left of the party. Um, okay, why do I uh, then uh, want to go with this personal uh, framework and, 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 and history? I don't think I would have been that excited to go speak at the political and cultural festival that to see about it by itself. Uh, but knowing that I had these contacts in Greece, it seemed to me that it would be really interesting uh, to see what was happening to the type of party that I had dreamed for uh, all of my adult life of seeing created and failed to see created in this country. 
uh, to see what was happening to it in the process of uh, it uh, emerging as a major political force in the context of uh, this great economic crisis, the fourth great crisis of capitalism. Uh, and and uh, it seemed too good to pass up. So I have to admit, uh, I used the invitation of the revolutionary left uh, mainly to go see what was happening to what they see uh, with the reformist left. Um, and, and it turned out to be uh, important and, and enormously interesting in the world. Um, having observed it closely, I'm sure as you all have, over the uh, previous two, three years, what was clearly remarkable was that uh, the type of insurrection that had occurred with the students, and I must say primarily with high school students, it was the high schools that were occupied right across the country in December 2008. Um, uh, what had occurred then had flowered again in a much broader way in the face of the imposition of the appalling austerity uh, that had been agreed to in the series of memoranda by first the SOC, uh, which had won 45% of the vote, by the way, uh, in, in 2009, uh, and then by uh, the government that replaced the new democracy. Um, and and uh, at the same time, I was very aware that, that one needed to be careful with how much one read into this protest. People would talk about the occupations going on in Greece. But in fact, the type of occupations that were taking place would be, yes, that a plant would be occupied, or a government office would be occupied, and then they would leave for the most part the next day. And it was a series of sporadic protests, some of them very violent, uh, some of them counterproductively violent as when a uh, Molotov cocktail was thrown into a building and some, a bank and some people had tragically died and the protests really came, tapered off for a significant period after that. Um, uh, but I was also very aware that this wasn't showing up at all in the official political system. That is, if you looked at opinion polls, what was so remarkable was that the Saka New Democracy continued to secure a uh, overwhelming proportion of the vote. Uh, and, and the KKE was the, the Communist Party, uh, which took part in these demonstrations, but always on its own, never as part of the more general mobilizations. And when indeed one of their militants was killed near Sintagma Square at one of their separately organized demonstrations, they very quietly buried him rather than making it the basis, as it could have been made, for a much wider and broader uh, but more significantly, I mean, apart from their holding on to their vote, uh, and apart from Pasak and New Democracy together getting, uh, holding on to 50% or more of the vote, uh, Syriza was stuck at around 4 or 5% uh, in the opinion polls. And Anthracia, the coalition of the revolutionary left, uh, you know, was barely, barely registering at all in the polls, as usual. Uh, so what really was going on? And when I got interviewed by these young people, I pressed them on this, and they really couldn't explain it either. Uh, so, lo and behold, in uh, March, suddenly, in late March, beginning of April, after the election is called, uh, in order to try to secure some legitimation uh, for the memorandum, which had been so clearly rejected uh, by people, uh, suddenly, Syriza starts shooting up in the polls. Uh, they had briefly uh, shown between 15 and 18 percent in 2008, and then after the student insurrection had tanked back to four or five percent, it wasn't even clear they'd get representation uh, in, in the parliament again. Uh, now, obviously, apart from this, uh, you know, it seemed to me that the debate that was going on. Uh, on the left with regard to whether Greece should stay in or go out of the euro was enormously important but also in a certain way remarkably technocratic if you like or at least apolitical. We ran it in last, last year's socialist register and I think we all felt very strongly uh, that it was an important debate and, and certainly the editors of the register strongly sympathized with the view that was articulated by Kostas Lapovitsas in last year's register, uh, uh, that Greece should already have pulled out of the euro, 
Uh, it should have reneged on its debt uh, long before. Uh, and, and that staying in uh, the Euro, if not in the European Union, was a disaster that would him hamstrung uh, forever. As against this, there were those people on the left, uh, Trotskyists like Michel Hassan, who wrote a piece, a very prominent German Marxist like Elmar Altweiler, uh, who strongly rejected that view and renewed their call for a social Europe. Uh, we shouldn't be pulling out of Europe, we should be reinvigorating ourselves for a struggle for a different kind of Europe, not a capitalist Europe, not a neoliberal Europe, not a Europe uh, of, of the bankers. Um, it seemed to me that what was missing in that whole debate was the very sobering and honest statement that needed to be made, which was that even if Lapovitsis was right, if Greece pulled out of the Euro, returned to the drachma, introduced capital control, the immediate suffering of its people would be enormous. And no one was addressing that. No one was addressing the fact that most of uh, the, the Greek population in every serious opinion poll that was held, apart from the, most of the political elite, did not want to leave Europe. Right? For all of uh, their resentment on the attack on their dignity that it represented now by virtue of the mem memorandum. Uh, and, you know, in many ways, and I said this a number of times over the last year, it seemed to me that we were back in a situation uh, uh, that was not dissimilar to 1917. That if Greek was the weakest link, and it would break and it would go, we then never very seriously needed to be talking about would there be a shift in the balance of forces elsewhere in Europe that would compensate to some extent for the, that would prevent uh, the Greek people from suffering even more egregiously as they had to find the means of paying for oil right, in a devalued drachma. And unlike uh, other countries that might pull out of global capitalism, Greece is a country that has virtually no resources apart from olive oil. Right? Uh, uh, the 100,000 manufacturing jobs that have been lost since they joined the European most of which are manufacturing jobs associated with shipbuilding or more often with agricultural production, aren't easily going to be reintroduced, and least of all, as an export sector. So the suffering would be enormous, and uh, there would have to be at least a shift in the balance of forces in Europe so that there would have to be some means of subsidizing their going out uh, on the part of political forces in Europe or elsewhere uh, if, if uh, this wasn't going to be uh, tremendously damaging. Now, of course, one could hope uh, that, uh, you know, as people hoped in Russia in 1917, that breaking the weakest link would lead to a revolution in Germany. It's not going to, given the balance of forces in Germany. That was much clearer today than it was in 1917. Um, now, I think the thing that's really important to stress uh, and it is not often stressed enough. Uh, as everybody talks about Syriza having come from nowhere, the bourgeois press is what we boast about this. Cyprus was a unknown, right? Uh, and suddenly this demagogue has appeared on the scene. Right? But the really important thing, especially for us to be discussing uh, the Socialist Project, the Social Justice, the, the Workers' Assembly, is that Syriza is, after all, has its roots in a party that has existed now for over two decades. Uh, and what is happening now is a product of the work that that party has done for over two decades. Uh, now, I could go into, and we would use up all of our time, and I'm sure those of you who know the ins and outs of uh, revolutionary parties over the last 20, 30 years would sometimes prefer, prefer that I would spend most of my time talking about this. I could go into a history of uh, how that party was formed, the various splits that it came out of, the various splits that it gave rise to, uh, the name of every minor organization that's attached to it, and why they are attached to it rather than attached to Antarsia. Uh, and why the KKE is not attached to either of them. I, I don't want to spend the night doing that. 
Uh, I just will say this. One, this is a party that has its roots in the communist movement of Greece. Unlike PASOK, that primarily had its roots in the centrist socialist party, the Social Democratic Party, really always a clientelist party, of Papandreou's father from the 50s and 60s, even though it had a very radical program uh, in uh, the, the late 1970s, early 80s, much like Mitterrand's uh, Common Front program with the communists in France. Uh, it, its roots were uh, in uh, that clientelist patronage political system. Syriza's roots, Syriza's Pismos's roots, are very clearly and, and openly in the communist tradition. So when they start making their breakthrough, they would proudly say, this is the largest vote for the left since 1958. And 1958 was when the party, which didn't have the name KKE then, it had a, a front name, uh, got 25% of the vote and scared the pants off uh, the Western establishment. Uh, they had been more scared in 47, of course, when Greece triggered the Marshall Plan in Europe. Uh, when Britain, given its economic crisis, clearly came to the Americans and said, we can't prevent Greece from falling from the Congress. Uh, and the Americans, that was the trigger moment at which the Americans <coughs> decided that they had to throw themselves uh, into preventing communist strength in Europe. And Greece at that point became a American trust rather than a British trust as it had been previously in the 20th century. Um, the people, and I, you know, a lot of uh, ink could be spilt about uh, the split that occurred in the Communist Party in the late 1960s between what became known as the Party of the Exterior Alliance of the Soviet Union, the Party of the Interior that was more Euro-Communist, then the split amongst the Party of the Interior between the Euro-Communists who were giving up on class struggle uh, and heading in the direction of the rest of social democracy uh, and those who tried to hold on to some notion of a party of the new left. Uh, one could go into the party of the government of all parties, which the communists took part in, as did uh, Sinus Pismos, uh, uh, which came out of that split in the uh, Euro-communists. Uh, uh, the roots of the revolutionary left now in Greece come out of the youth wing of the communists that broke away at that time from the KKE for participating in that government. Uh, and ironically now, they are primarily oriented into the Trotskyist tradition, even though they come out of a Stalinist uh, history. Uh, the point, I think, is this, that while it was possible to say that uh, the party that was created uh, through the 1990s had a strong element of a reformist orientation. There was always a very strong element of the more radical, if, if always one that looked to an electoral rather than insurrectionary strategy for changing the Greek state. But by 2003, 2004, uh, they entered into an alliance with social movements and other radical parties uh, from the left. Uh, and you could say the left took over Sinus Pismos from that time, and its orientation was of the kind that led it to play that kind of central role it did in supporting the student insurrection and in supporting the protests against the austerity uh, that has been imposed on Greece since 2009-2010. Uh, um, uh, in fact, uh, most significantly, uh, it was the right, the parliamentarist wing of the party that broke away in 2010 uh, and formed what is the democratic left that is likely to enter into government now with PASOK and new democracy. Uh, 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 which is indicative, I think, of the reason that I look upon uh, Syriza as the type of party that I would have liked to have built here that I think the Socialist Project is about, uh, but we've failed created, has been failed to create in most other places by my generation. Uh, it's an open party, uh, and the Trotskyists in it are very, very proud of this with their call for uh, open factions inside parties, uh, in the sense that because it is made up of so many groups, even though the largest one 
is Sinus uh, Pisnos, even if it's the only one that has a real party structure with some 13,000 members and branches and, and, and uh, offices in every major constituency in every city in the country, etc. It's a very open party and debates are openly revealed and discussed in it. Uh, none of this is held behind closed doors in central committee meetings. It's a party oriented to mobilization, uh, as I've indicated. And above all, and I think this is most important, its program, in, including in terms of nationalizing banks, uh, its program in terms of the Greek state is corrupt, patronage ridden, uh, and needs to be fundamentally changed, is not something that emerged in the context of the protests of the last two years. This is a program that goes back to the 1980s. Its relevance becomes clear in this enormous crisis. But it's not something that suddenly is thrown up by the crisis itself, which I think is very, very important. Uh, uh, in 2008, when they were getting 15 to 18% of the opinion polls, they produced a 300-page program, which had all of the elements of what is now their program. Uh, and although my Greek is non-existent and therefore I can't report to you directly, and Google Translate won't translate it, it's too big, and it's never been translated into English, I'm told by everybody I trust there that the basis of the program is all there uh, in the, that program was published in the beginning of 2009. The turning point from having remained all through uh, the crisis over the last two years uh, at a stagnant, uh, some four or five percent of, of, of the vote, the breakthrough to them getting 17 percent in the May election, and now 27 percent, uh, over 27 percent in the current election, uh, with some opinion polls <coughs> having shown them well over 30 percent, the most serious one, uh, in the two weeks before the election. Uh, the turning point was when Tsipras, in a television uh, debate, in late March said, we are not running in this election just to do better. We are not running in this election just to have an electoral process. We are running in this election to form a left government. Right? We think it's unconscionable for Greece to continue, for Greeks to continue to be subjected to this indignity, and we are attempting to form a government of the left. Moreover, he made it very clear that the government of the left he was talking about included the KKE and did not include the democratic left, the modernizers, the right-wing social democrats, the parliamentarians, who had left Syriza in the two years before. Okay. And it was that statement that we can form a government, that we want to form a government, that changed everything. And people started flocking to vote for it. It was like there is a realistic alternative. He's pronouncing one, and it made all the difference. And people told me, including people on the Central Committee, that when he said it, they said, where the fuck did that come from? <laughs> and, and they looked at each other and said, what's he talking about? Okay. Uh, that was the turn. Uh, what was also very significant was that when they got 17% of the vote, when uh, New Democracy couldn't form a majority with the SOC then, uh, uh, even with the 50, the astonishing 50-seat bonus the leading party gets, even if it only leads by one-tenth of one percent uh, in the popular vote, they still couldn't form a majority. They then turned to Tsipras and asked him to join the National Unity Government. And he didn't then sit down with the party to discuss whether they could hammer something out. He immediately called a meeting with the unions and the social movements and said, what should we do? Right? Now, there's no question he was leading their opinion. They had no intention of going to such a government, going to be a kiss of death. Uh, what was the voting base? Primarily urban. There is enormous fear of Syriza as communist in rural Greece. Uh, a fear based on they'll take our land, which goes back to this uh, long tradition of fear associated with this. But all the major cities 
uh, including in some cities uh, that they hadn't done well. They'd always done well in Khania and Crete, but not in Iraq. They did extremely well uh, in Athens and Piraeus, etc. Uh, one pollster said at a meeting uh, of the Policy and Planning Committee of uh, Syriza that I was allowed to attend as a fly on the wall, one of their party pollsters said, uh, if uh, nobody over 65 voted, New Democracy would get 17% of the votes. <laughs> PASOK would get 7% of the votes. But what's also very important to register here, and I think we have a misleading view about this, is that um, the under 25s are also not primarily for Syriza. It's between 25 and 65 that you find the bulk of the Syriza advantage. Now, that's very interesting and important and surprising in some ways. And you can, t you can test this by the elections that are had for student uh, government uh, in Greece, because as often in Europe, you have parties running for who will form union administrations or student union administrations, etc. And in those, it's New Democracy, the Communist Party, and sometimes even Anthracia that often does better than Syriza. Now, they said they think that the high school students who were part of the revolt in 2009 uh, and, and now in universities are much more oriented to Syriza. So that, can, that, that cohort may be changing from what they can see. But that's very interesting. It, does, it should tell you something about being careful about the youth being revolutionary. In fact, their polls show that it's new democracy that often does best amongst university students, not the communists and, and Andrusia, although they often do better than Syria. Okay. Now it's also very, very important to know about Greece, uh, and very important in this context, is that the Federation of Small Business, equivalent to the Canadian Federation of Small Business, uh, and its leadership has been very close to Syriza in these last months. And this isn't in some ways sociologically so surprising. If you were a communist in Greece, after the communists were defeated in the Civil War, you could not get a job as a teacher, you could not get a job at any level of the state, right? you could not get a job as an intellectual, you could not get a job in most of the press, etc. A lot of them, those who were educated, became small business people. Tremendous PhD <coughs> pieces and some articles have been written about this. The woman who is the main uh, the chief economist of the Small Business Federation comes from a communist family, a KKE family. Uh, she's now very close to Syriza and is a link and buck buckle between the Small Business Federation and Syriza. And you can understand uh, that part of the sense of the loss of dignity that, that uh, Greek workers are feeling, the Greek public employees are feeling, is also felt by many small businessmen uh, uh, who are hardly the equivalent of the bankers and ship owners, etc. Uh, a large element of their constituency as well is public employees. Uh, that has a long history, but especially in this crisis, insofar as there's a party there that's saying we will form a government and we will stop the public sector layoffs. That not most, uh, for all of their criticism of the state, that not most of the people who work for the Greek state are corrupt, uh, inefficient, uh, lazy, etc. Uh, they offer a defense to them. In any case, a party like Syriza has a certain base amongst teachers uh, and, and uh, civil servants, uh, social work civil servants, care civil servants, etc. Uh, but uh, they have a much now larger base and a very large proportion of their vote. And very deliberately, they were, tag they were targeting them. It comes from public employees. Now, the type of campaign that they ran, uh, and this is a very politicized society, and you need to regret, so this isn't something new. Uh, you would see people, the people I would talk to, who were spending 14 hour days trying to get the program ready. Uh, I arrived on a Monday. The program was going to re be released by Tsipras on the Friday to the media, uh, trying to write something new for the program from the last election campaign. These people who were trying to do that right, were then, after a 14 hour day trying to do this, running off to meetings in neighborhood squares. And in every neighborhood square, you will see a Syriza uh, trailer 
and, it, and every evening these trailers open up and pamphlets are handed out, speeches are made, music is blared. It's, it's, a, it's a politicized society. That's not to say Artesia doesn't do some of this, the anarchists do some of this, even though they're not running, okay, the KDE does some of this, obviously. Uh, but given the size of uh, uh, Syriza uh, and its voting base now, you could see this everywhere. And, and so it was a type of campaign uh, that wasn't just knocking on doors, it was also uh, right in your face in the streets and right in the campaign. Their program was as much a matter of reasserting Greek dignity uh, as promising monetary safety, uh, as promising uh, they were going to be able to return people uh, to some form of economic stability. And I think it's clear that was very, very important. I mean, while I was there, uh, two uh, pharmacists were charged uh, with criminal acts for refusing to give cancer drugs to people who came into the pharmacy with prescriptions for it. And they said, we can't give this to you because the government is not paying us for the drugs we provide to people. Uh, so the same government that wasn't paying them then charged them with not providing this to cancer patients. But there's a general crisis in the health system of which that is only a particularly stark example. So there's a sense of, you know, of, of more than just we don't have job security. There's a sense of more than we're not keeping the same welfare benefits. There's a sense of uh, uh, tremendous indignity. Uh, and the suicides, not only the very famous and politicized suicide of that old guy in Syntagma Square where there's now quite a moving memorial. Uh, but he, again, while I was there, a mother and son jumped off a roof, not with the same politicized suicide note, but people took it as the same. There were a number of other 